Let the church say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. Thank the current God, uh, Seventh day Adventist Church Choir. How excellent is our God. I remember that's a wonderful anthem that we used to sing when I was back home in my home church. So we're here today because God has been good to us. And so I must put you on notice right now before I go any further. This is a great encampment. And we're here to celebrate God's goodness to us. So we have come with our praise because God has been good to us. He has brought us a mighty long way. And we're here for this camp meeting to let the world know that there is no God like our God. We have come to exercise our faith. We have come to celebrate with our family members. We have come to celebrate freedom of worship and good food together. So it's going to be a grand time as we worship God in the beauty of holiness. I'm so glad to be here with you for this great camp meeting and to have this great start with our singers, our youth choir. And can I tell you, let's give a big amen to our young people, our children who did the story for us. The amen, amen. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the lord the bible tells us that we should not be afraid to worship god he says enter in his courts with praise and so we are here to praise god and to magnify his name and i must tell you at the onset i hope you have come with your praise because we are not going to keep quiet we are just going to worship god while we have breath and so it's good to see all of you here and let me get the preliminaries out of the way and then we will get right into our worship for today let me start by expressing my profound and heartfelt gratitude to dr franklin wariba or senior pastor and his wife we want also to express appreciation to pastor fenard ratimo his associate pastor elder isaac koluba the head elder and his wife the board of elders and all the officers that ensure that this is made possible other presenters who will be presenting um, for this great camp meeting our elder in charge of this camp meeting in the planning and his associate elder brian mogaka i get that right mogaka Thank you, I hope you have to help me as I try to work my way through this. And I must tell you that meeting me at the airport, I had the great honor of having Pastor Wariba and Elder Tom Ngira. Ngiri. Thank you, Ngiri. Yes, he came by and they ensured that I was okay. And I can tell you, you have given me the finest hosts that I can have anywhere. Elder Ezra and Beatrice Odondi. Yes, thank you. And I can tell you, it has been good. And I met earlier inside the personal ministries director, um, Sister Judy. And so it is good. I am having a wonderful time. So I bring you greetings on behalf of my conference, Northeastern Conference officers, Dr. Eldin King, President, the Executive Secretary, Dr. Delahaye, Nicardo Delahaye, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, 
we bring you greetings on behalf of our treasurer, Elder Brian McDonald, our associate, um, executive secretary, Dr. Keith Albury, all the officers and members of our great conference. And of course, I have to bring you greetings on behalf of the fabulous Flatbush Seventh-day Adventist Church with my associate pastor, Pastor Langley, my first elder, Dr. David Hosten, and all the board of elders, officers, and members, I greet you well. Then I must greet you also on behalf of my immediate family, my wife, Loida, my daughter, Yolessa Kayla, and my son, Michael Hugh Jr., the replica of me. And I am just grateful to bring you greetings on their behalf. And I must greet the saints wherever you are worshiping that I am now greeting you from the continent of Africa. And in particular, um, Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya. And I'm here to tell you that it is a good feeling to be in the motherland. And so I greet my friend. They know they're watching wherever you are, be it night or day or afternoon when you will watch this message. I greet my brother from another mother, Carl and Sister Joan Powell. I greet you and I want you to know that you have nothing to worry about. I am in good hands and the saints are treating me well. And I'm just happy to be here with you. I know we are going to be having a wonderful time together as we focus on our theme for this great camp meeting, Salvation Simplified. And we are going to be talking about the sanctuary so i invite those who are watching online if you are not incapacitated i'm going to ask you to come right down here to the karangara seventh -day adventist church this is the best location in the nation this is where the action will be for the next few weeks as we celebrate god's goodness in our lives and can i tell you i'm putting the communication team a notice because i know that you are doing a tremendous job and i notice also you are catering for everybody even for the airing impaired and we have our sign language personal personnel there communication team it is gonna be a wonderful time and so back home i would say that we have no problem but they told me over here that if I ought to say that we don't have any problem, I need to say, Akuna Matata. No problem. So I'm here to tell you no problem. So I ask you, Jumbo. See, see. So it is good and we're here to praise God. So worship with me as we get into the word. Today, I want to speak to you on the topic the sanctuary a divine blueprint the sanctuary a divine blueprint i want to tell you at the onset that out here the bible is king amen i out of here a bigger amen out here the bible is king so i want you to invite your bible to come with you be it the hard copy or the soft copy because this is where we're going to go amen and you know the bible is the basic instruction before leaving earth and we want to leave earth alive and well so we have to be grounded in the word amen so i invite you to come with your bible come with your family members and your friends tell them that great things are happening out here the topic, the sanctuary, a divine blueprint. And I want you to worship with me as we go along. The text was read earlier 
And so, can I ask you to do something? I don't know what you do here, but I'm going to invite you to stand with me as I read the word again, as we honor the reading of the word of God. Stand with the preacher as we get ready to go into the word. Stand with me. Exodus chapter 25. And the verses are 8 and 9. And it reads thus from the King James Version. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the, inst the instructions thereof even so shall he make it our heads are bowed our heavenly father marvelous are your ways toward us the children of men we have come at your behest because you have drawn us for this great encampment we have come to celebrate your goodness in our lives we have come for a spiritual revival and transformation we have come today because we need to hear from you and so now i ask that you will take your servant make me pliable in your hands so that the words of my mouth and the heart's meditation of your people will be pleasing in your sight and at the end of the service when the call is extended may each of us be willing be it in the physical space or online to surrender our lives to you on undeterred we pray in jesus name please be seated in the presence of god thank you very much the sanctuary a divine blueprint brothers and sisters fellow worshipers the salvific or salvation process is so critical that it necessitates exploring how the sanctuary serves as a divine blueprint for our spiritual lives and relationships with God. The sanctuary services, as described in the Old Testament, were a detailed system of worship. It consisted of the tabernacle, its furnishings, and the rituals performed by the priests. Each element and action within the sanctuary was symbolic and pointed to deeper spiritual truths about God's plan for salvation. Addressing the subject at hand, I will engage you in discussions of the sanctuary's purpose the structure 
the need for the sanctuary and also to give us some tips as to how we can deal with this subject and apply its teachings to our immediate situations. Point number one, the purpose of the sanctuary. Why was the sanctuary needed? Why did God give the instruction to build a sanctuary? Can I posit right here that when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they had the opportunity to communicate with God face to face. Unhindered, unhinged, they could communicate with God. God gave clear instructions as to how they ought to operate in the Garden of Eden. But the Bible would have us understand that the first couple in the Garden of Eden disobeyed God. Clear instructions. And as a result of their disobedience, they were expunged. They were driven from the Garden of Eden and no longer could communicate with God face to face. May I say right here and now that our greatest problem in the world is not a financial problem. Our greatest problem in the world is not a political problem. Our greatest problem is a sin problem. But I thank God that though men alienated themselves from him, God, a loving God, desires to communicate with man. He implemented a system that he could still be close to his people. God's desire to dwell among his people. You see, the sanctuary was God's dwelling place among his people. He represented his desire to be close to humanity and to guide them. God still desires to be close to us and also to guide us. Come here with me as we draw closer to the text. God's desire to be close to us is not limited to congregational worship. Let me repeat that. God's desire to be close to us is not limited to congregational worship when we come apart on the Holy Sabbath in our splendor. We come to worship God on his holy day in his church. But I'm here to tell you today, brothers and sisters, I will address that a little later. But may I suggest right here that we, God created the sanctuary that we could be close to him. May I suggest as we worship today that not only in congregational worship, but we need to create a dedicated space in your home in our homes for prayer and reflection as a precursor to our corporate worship. Can I tell you, if you are going to come to church and worship God, you have to learn to worship God seven days a week and twice on Sabbath. You have to have your personal moments in your home where you dedicate a place where you can commune with God because God desires our worship every single day of our lives. That is what the sanctuary teaches us. You see, 
this can be a small corner with a comfortable chair, a Bible, or a journal. We got to use this space regularly to meet with God. Can you imagine? God wants to meet with each of us. It doesn't matter our situation in life. God wants to meet with us. God wants to communicate with us. And that is why I love the word because one of the basic tenets of the Christian faith is that we serve a God who communicates. He communicates and he wants to communicate with us and so he has given us the Bible. The sanctuary was a place of meeting and worship. Just as a community center serves as a hub for local gathering and events, the sanctuary was the central place for the Israelites to come together and meet with God. This is a solemn statement that I'm going to make right now that has universal application. In a time when church attendance is becoming sparse, the sanctuary message calls us with a clarion tone with clarion tones to make attending church services a priority. Can I talk to the church? Can I preach it like I feel it? Well, we have come to live in an age where people want to serve God as if he is an option. Sometimes people have to poke us and nudge us to come to the sanctuary to worship. But can I tell you, the sanctuary is God's dedicated place to meet with his people. Yes, it is all right to worship online. Yes, it is all right to have communion online. But I'm here to tell you, COVID is over to a large extent and we can still come to the church to worship so don't stay comfortable in your living room while the house of God is here waiting for you to come to worship God needs you in the church no more than ever we should engage in corporate worship and community activities recognizing the value of being part of a faith community i know i'm preaching to the the converted because you're here in the sanctuary but i'm encouraging you now is the time when we should come together for fellowship don't let anything or anyone keep you away from this camp meeting we have to come together because we must not forsake the assembling of the saints together because iron sharpened iron we must come we must feast on the word we must be encouraged by the word we must come and fellowship with one another because can i tell you not long from now this privilege of freedom of worship will be taken away from us for we are living we are dwelling in a grand and awful time in an age where age is telling to be living is sublime hark 
the waking up of nations. Gog and Magog to the fray. Hark what soundeth is creation groaning for her latter days i come by to tell us brothers and sisters that time is running out and jesus is about to come and those who mean salvation got to get serious to live for god to practice your faith and to do it according to the word of god the sanctuary purpose is that it is a place where god meets and dwell with his people there is a blessing to be in the presence of God in the church. Point number two. Let us look at the structure of the sanctuary. The offerings and sacrifices which I will deal with as we go along performed in the sanctuary illustrated the seriousness of sin and the necessity of atonement sin as i mentioned earlier is our greatest problem sin alienates Sin corrupts. Sin deteriorates. Nothing that sin touches remains the same. Sin not only separates us from God, it alienates us from one another. Come here, worshipers. Can you understand that the reason why some people even from the same family in the same faith cannot relate to one another are having grievance against one another in the same church singing on the same choir and not talking to one another it's because sin has caused separation sin has caused division and ultimately sin kills but i thank god that the sanctuary teaches us that god made provision that those who are affected and infected by sin can once again have forgiveness and be at one meant with god let the church say amen addressing the seriousness of sin its nature and the consequences is vital to understanding why the sanctuary was necessary in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 the Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God you don't have to look to your right nor to your left the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in other words brothers and sisters sin is any thought word or action against God's will and God's law it separates us from God because he is holy and cannot coexist with sin oh Lord God is holy and cannot coexist with sin in other words let me put it where you can reach it all have sinned sin separates us from God it simply means God's presence which is a consuming fire would have consumed all of us but for the grace of God let the church say amen imagine 
worshipers. A pristine white garment. Even a tiny stain makes it unclean. Similarly, even the most minor sin makes us unworthy to be in God's perfect presence. Lord, have mercy. It is essential to recognize that sin, regardless of its magnitude, breaks our relationship with God and requires atonement. The nature of sin, brothers and sisters, is manifested in one's rebellion against God's commandment. It is sad because in the world in which we live, people have disregarded God. And there are even proclaimers of the good news of salvation who are teaching people to disregard the commandments of God. But I come by in this encampment to remind us that God has called the remnant church the final church with the final message to give to a world that has gone adrift to call them back to keep the commandments of God to be obedient to God and to live in holiness because God desires holiness do I still have a church here today if that is above you let me come home Consider a child deliberately disobeying their parents' rule. We see it as an act of defiance. Am I correct? Sin is our defiance against God's authority. We come to live in a time where people don't like authority. People don't like to be governed. They will tell you, well, I'm my own man. I am my own woman. I am grown. I set the, the parameters for what I do. But I come to tell us that we are God's children. We are under God's authority. And we have to live the way God wants us to live. And that is what the sanctuary is teaching us. God is a peculiar God. God is a God of order. And order are still to be in God's church. Can I talk to my young people in this postmodern generation where Humanistic philosophies are teaching that you don't need to fall in line with the dictates of God's word. Well, I'm here to tell you that the best way to survive is to order your lives in harmony with God's word. Stay with God. Stay with God. You see, saints, understanding that sin is a severe offense that goes beyond mere actions. It's a heart issue of rebellion against God. We can't rebel against God and expect that everything will be okay. The consequences of sin are spiritual death and separation from God. The Bible says in Romans 6 and verse 23, the Bible says, For the wages of sin 
is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I say amen. The ultimate consequence of sin is spiritual death and eternal separation from God. This, brothers and sisters, highlights the gravity of sin and the need for a means of reconciliation to be at one moment with God again. And that is the, the word atonement says, it spells A T. O N E M E N T. If you are to break that up in syllables, we have at one meant. So sin separates us. And in order to be at one meant with God, in harmony with God, it calls for reconciliation. We cannot take the initiative it was God who took the initiative when he sent his son for the Bible tells us in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19 that God was in Christ reconciling us unto himself let the church say amen young people Think of a plant cut off from its roots. Without its source of life, it withers and dies. Sin cuts us off from God. Our source of spiritual life leading to spiritual death. Take a fish out of the ocean and the fish dies. Take a plant from the source, the ground from which it gets its nutrients. And the tree, the plant, dies. Take a Christian apart from God. And he or she will die. There is no life apart from God. It doesn't matter what we possess. It doesn't matter how educated we are. It doesn't matter our earthly connection. If we don't have God, we are destined to fail. I thank God that the sanctuary teaches us that even if we are alienated by our sins, there is hope, there is forgiveness, there is pardon, there is cleansing, and there is oneness with God. Let the church say amen. So my third and final point is this. The sanctuary is needed. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. The Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So in order for atonement to take place, the sanctuary 
was established as a place where sacrifices could be made to atone for sins. Now, the shedding of blood symbolized the seriousness of sin and the cost of atonement. Sin costs. There's a price to be paid. And you and I cannot pay that price. Consider us owing a debt that we must pay, that must be paid. Someone else must pay for us if we can't pay for it ourselves. The sacrifices in the sanctuary were like payments made on our behalf to settle our debt of sin. Today, we are called to acknowledge the need for atonement and the role of the sanctuary in providing a means of reconciliation with God. Here we are in a helpless and hopeless situation. We need God's provision for reconciliation. We need divine intervention. We need God's act on our behalf. But I thank God that the Bible tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Paying the price that you and I should pay and were unable to pay. In Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22, the Bible says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. The sanctuary system pointed forward to the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ because the blood of the lamb and the turtle dove cannot take away sin but the bible would have us understand that jesus was slain from the foundation of the world god looked down the corridors of time he saw you and he saw me he saw you and i and in order for us to be saved to be forgiven to be reconciled he gave the best he had jesus came and died so that we can have life. The ultimate sacrifice, those sacrifices were pointing to the time when Jesus Christ, who shed his blood once and for all to atone for our sins, could be made possible. John 1. 29, he is the Lamb of God that takes the world's sins away. Aren't we grateful for the selflessness of Christ? That he died so that look on us, we can come in church, we can sit down well garbed, we can be called pastors and elders and deacons and deaconesses and choir directors and technicians and we are all here because of what Christ has done for us and out of gratitude we need to live for him imagine a legal system where the intervention of a 
benevolent authority grants pardon. The sanctuary sacrifices were temporary measures pointing to the permanent solution through Jesus' sacrifice. It is a time in the sanctuary it calls to meditation, mediation rather, and intercession. In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, the Bible says, The high priest in the sanctuary served as a mediator between God and the people. This role foreshadowed Christ's work as our great high priest who intercedes for us before the Father. Today, God has made the way, just like how the high priest would enter the most holy to intercede on our behalf. Jesus is interceding for us. Let us see the provision of Jesus' sacrifice as the ultimate atonement for sin. Understanding that it fulfills the sanctuary's purpose. That's what it's all about. So let me close right here by saying to us as we ponder what we have heard the sanctuary message encourages us to take time every day how many times every day to examine our hearts examine our minds confess our sins and seek God's forgiveness remembering the sacrifice Jesus made for us that's what it's all about today I encourage each of us to share your personal experience of overcoming sin and finding reconciliation with God. Fostering a community of support and accountability to each other. Today, I invite you to embrace the sanctuary's provision of reconciliation through Jesus Christ by responding with gratitude and commitment. To live a life that honors God's sacrifice. Are you willing today? To surrender unreservedly to him? Are you willing today to allow the sanctuary message that we are focusing on for this encampment and today to see that it is not just historical data but God has a message for us today I join with the hymnist who penned these words king of my life I crown thee now Thine shall the glory be, lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow. Lead me to Calvary, lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. The second stanza says, show me the tomb where thou wast laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light arrayed guarded thee while thou slept. Verse 3, 
let me like Mary through the gloom come with a gift to thee show to me now the empty tomb lead me to Calvary and the final stanza says may I be willing Lord to bear daily my cross for thee even thy cup of grief to share thou hast borne all for me this camp meeting is to bring us closer to jesus i don't know what the devil may have done to us he may have plunged us in the valley of dismay he may have caused us to bear false witness by advertising with our lives falsely and people who know us are wondering as God's advertisements if we are a true reflection of the God we serve. And he may be telling somebody today that you have gone too far and God cannot reach you. It may be a young person who is on the verge of stepping back from God in pursuit of the pleasures and the glamour of the world. I come by to tell you today that God loves you, that God needs you, that God is depending on you. God has no hands but ours, no feet but ours, no voice but our voices. And God needs us in a world that no longer wants to serve God, that we must stand up and be counted for God. Today, the sanctuary is teaching us it's a call for sacrifice. It's a call for dedication. I'm going to invite the singers to come and they're going to sing this hymn for me. King of my life, I crown thee now. You're going to come with your gift. You may be here today on the balcony or right down here or even online. You're going to come with your gift and your gift is your life. You're going to come. I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus. You may be young or you may be old. Not yet baptized. Not yet surrendered to Jesus. This is the moment. The best gift you can give is to give of yourself to the master. You may have wandered away. It's a time for reconciliation to come back to God. Don't watch what anyone will say or who is looking. You need Jesus and he's available now. Salvation has come. There is hope with Jesus. While they sing, those who know how to pray are praying. I'm going to invite those who are courageous enough just like how Jesus left the portals of glory and condescended to earth within our context so that he could save us and reconcile us to the Father. I'm going to ask you from wherever you are to just stand up and walk to the altar. We're going to pray together. We're going to organize together. We are going to surrender together because it is going home time and we've got to get right with God or else we're going to get left. None of us want to be left behind we need jesus and we need him now sing that song for us 317 can i ask the church to stand stand with me please as we sing this hymn make it easy for somebody who's going to walk and greet me down front as we surrender to King jesus today. Of my life, I in prayerful meditation who will be the first a man a woman a boy or a girl i want to pray with you you have been struggling i want to come today i want to pray with you don't be afraid 
walk from where you're standing come and shake hand with the pastor we're going to pray together we're going to go home together who will be the first a boy a girl a man a woman a backslider you know god is speaking to you he said behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come in and i'll sup with him the first call today is for a boy or a girl a man or a woman you are here for this great encampment and you're not yet surrendered to jesus i'm going to ask you to walk from where you are come down front and shake hand with the pastor we're going to turn it over to jesus today come on don't be afraid don't be afraid a boy a girl a man a woman come on don't be afraid god bless you said a little child shall lead them come on come on come on god bless you brother god bless you brother god bless you come on come on come on god bless you come on don't be afraid come on don't be afraid god is talking to you he loves you come on and it doesn't matter what your yesterday may have been come on come on god bless you pastor gonna pastor just greet them for me is there one from the balcony i don't know who you are i don't know what you're going through i don't know what you're faced with god bless you come on home. god bless you walk down shake hand with the pastor i don't know what you're going through i don't know what your problems are but i come by to tell you that the best friend to have is jesus he loves you he cares for you he died for you do you love him come on sister come on listen to that still voice speaking to you would you be willing just to make a step for him leave here the same way you came come on come on i know you're struggling god is talking to you can you hear his voice if your heart is racing it's a clear indication that god is speaking to you he loves you it doesn't matter what your yesterday may have been come on you may be in a situation where you feel that it is hopeless come on sister come on brother is there one more for jesus from this section come on not yet baptized not yet surrendered would you walk with the preacher today this is your call from jesus to you i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and I'll sup with you. He loves you. Is there one more today? Come on, come on, come on. I know you're struggling and we're here to encourage you today. The church is praying. The Holy Spirit is moving. And our time is ticking away. Is there one more you love the Lord and you want to demonstrate today whose side you're on you want to turn it over to God you want a new lease on life you are tired you are tired of the life you're now living you cry yourself to sleep at nights Nothing seems to be working but if you can just trust God sing that song we have 60 seconds to do it is there one on the balcony you're folding your hands you know that God is talking to you young man 
young woman. He says, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Is there one more courageous man or woman who wants to make that move today? Make that move for God and surrender to Him. It is your faith plus your action that will bring God's intervention in your life. If He could have emptied heaven to save you, there is nothing too hard for God to do. Is there one more who is making that move today? You're standing beside a family member or a friend. You're a member of the church, but your friend is not. If you love your friend, just hold hand. Hold the hand of your friend and make your way down. This is your moment. Hold the hand of your friend and make your way down. We're going to pray together. We're going to talk to God together. Is there one more on this side? This is your time. Hold your hand. Hold the hand of your friend and make your way down. It's not hard. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, young man. Make that surrender to him today. Come on. We have to get closer to God. That's the purpose of the sanctuary. That's why it was so beautifully illustrated for us that Jesus loved us. He loves us with an everlasting love and he wants to save us. Chorus one more time. Chorus one more time. Her heads are bowed. Pastor's gonna come and pastor's gonna pray this prayer for us. But I know there are others. You may be online. As I look into the camera and talk to you today. God is not limited to geographical location. He is not limited to any geographical location. He can reach you wherever you are. Would you in that chat right there indicate you love the Lord. You want to surrender your life to him. Put your number so that we can reach you. And wherever you are, we will reach you. But don't walk away, not surrendering to Jesus. Today he is calling, and tomorrow he may be coming. Would you be ready? Would you be ready? Pastor is going to pray. Join me, Pastor. is going to pray for those who have walked to the altar. And if you are there, you did not have the courage to walk. Our heads are bowed and our eyes closed. Would you raise your hand wherever you are? We will include you in that prayer. A man, a woman, a boy, a girl that loves the Lord, not yet surrendered or a backslider and you want to come back, just raise your hand. God will see that hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Our heads are bowed. Pray for us, Pastor. God bless you. He sees those hands. God bless you. Let's pray. Our Father, our Father, God who is so merciful, gracious, and kind, mm -hmm. we thank you so much for dying on the cross. Well, Lord, you saw we were helpless. We want to thank you for your word. Yes. That has found us, Lord. That has given us even courage to embrace and even to accept the appeal of love that you are calling us so that we don't perish, mm. but we receive this gift that Lord you have given us those of us who are not worthy even to receive it our gracious loving God what can we say but to say thank you yes 
give us the healing feeling of the Holy Spirit to continue strengthening us, Lord, to walk with you. We are helpless, but thank you for your strong and almighty God, our Father, mm -hmm. for accepting us again because you are not even worthy to be saved, but what a marvelous love. Receive your children, Lord. Yes. Forgive us, God. Forgive us again. Mm -hmm. Write our names in the book of life. Yes. May you, Lord, tie us to you because this sin, these sins, they keep on pulling us back. We want to thank you for using your man servants. And we want to thank you for your word that has brought us to us. And thank you for lighting our names in the book of life and for giving your daughters and your brothers here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Keep standing for the closing rituals. I'll see you again this afternoon. Come. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Come keep my company so that we can share the word again together. God bless you.